Hi, I'm Dr. Tiffany Powell Wiley. I'm here today with Dr. Bill Krauss to talk about the physical activity guidelines that came out today. Dr. Krauss, can you tell me a little bit about your role with the physical activity guidelines? Yes, so thank you. Um, in 2016, about 70, 17 of us were assembled to develop the science that would uh, underlie the basis for writing new guidelines in 2018. And I um, was the head of a committee that focused on measuring physical activity. How can we uh, uh, determine that individuals are getting enough physical activity? There have been a lot of develops in, developments in the last 10 years about how we can assess our physical activity level. Can you talk a little bit about how the group you worked with came to consensus with so much data that's uh, been developed over the last year, several years? Yeah, so we had five meetings over the course of the uh, 16 months that we were meeting. They were all public meetings held um, in Washington, D.C. And in each successive meeting, we developed more accumulation of our data. So it first came with a collection of a search of literature, review of the literature, accepting certain publications for consideration in development of the science. And then each of us on the 12 committees presented where we were with each, at each stage, what we had learned, and then um, it was discussed in public. And then based upon that, we accepted the report of the subcommittee or not. And what were some of the findings with all of that work? Yeah, so we, my committee particularly, focused on measurement, as I indicated. And a lot of the work uh, coming up to this round had been based upon surveys. And there's problem with surveys. There's recall biases. Mm -hmm. There's reporting biases. Um, and the survey tools we use don't measure light physical activity very well. Right. And as you know, in the last 10 years, there have been a development of a lot of wearables that allow us to do step counts. So we felt it very important to assess whether step counting could be used as an exposure measure. Uh, we're also interested in relooking at the issue of whether physical activity had, be a, had to be obtained in bouts of 10 minutes or more, which went back to the recommendations that were originally written in 1996 by the CDC and American College of Sports Medicine. Great. And so what would be some of the take-home messages that you'd like clinicians and practitioners to learn from the new guidelines, to take yeah. away from the new guidelines? Well, we reviewed the dose-response curves of physical activity exposure versus outcome, particularly all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality, diabetes, cancer, and a number of other conditions. And it's very interesting because the dose response curves are very characteristically similar. Mm. There's an early drop in mortality when you go from doing nothing to doing very little. Mm -hmm. And then it tends to level off as you get to higher levels of physical activity. So the messages are, number one, anything mm. is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And the curve drops pretty quickly. So with even small increments in physical activity, you can get substantial benefit. But the more you do, the more benefit you get. But you have to do a lot more increase to get benefit at the higher ends. Okay. And as far as measurement of light physical activity, what are some of the things that we need to think about as practitioners? Well, we haven't gotten um, enough data on light physical activity, and this is one of our calls for more research. Um, we really need to get, now with the advent of wearable technology, we need to get people investigating whether or not light activity contributes to that curve. We think it does, mm -hmm. but we don't know for sure. But the basic messages we have is, number one, step counting is a good way mm -hmm. of measuring uh, our physical activity exposure. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know the optimal number of steps. Okay. We don't know yeah, that was one the of minimal questions. number of steps. We don't know, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, but those data will be forthcoming. Okay. Um, 
So we didn't have enough data that, that actually could go into the guidelines. So you won't see actually a step count goal in the okay. guidelines. Okay. And will we see, uh, do we see minute goals at all around physical activity? Yes. What you find is that, uh, what we found scientifically, is that 150 minutes uh, a week of moderate to vigorous physical activity is still a good target. It's not the maximal target, it's mm -hmm. not the optimal target, mm -hmm. but the greatest number of people will get the greatest benefit by targeting that amount. Okay. So it sounds like for us as cardiologists and other uh, clinicians, we really want to increase or promote getting more steps, getting more activity. Any activities in, is, is better activity, um, and we don't necessarily have to focus on a step target, it's really about getting patients moving. Right, getting patients moving, and anything counts. That's the other thing we found. Um, this 10 minutes requirement for a bout length is something that's not necessary. Okay. So people, we had a dissonance a little bit in telling people to park distance from the entrance to the workplace and walk in, mm -hmm. to take the stairs instead of the elevator. Mm -hmm. But none of those bouts were 10 minutes or more. Right. So we were saying it had to be 10 minutes, but we were telling people to do stuff that wasn't 10 minutes. I think that the science would say that anything counts. Okay, that's a great. And it's the accumulated amount okay. that really matters. Okay. I think those are very helpful take home messages for us treating patients. And is there anything else you think we need to know as uh, to let our patients know right now? Uh, I think those are ma the major messages. The other thing is we did look at sedentary activity. Okay. There are coming to become some publications that actually assess the, and you've probably heard about them, mm -hmm. right, that mm -hmm. sitting's bad. Right, absolutely. And the question is how much sitting? It's the same question. What's right. the minimum? What's the maximum? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. There was one er very inf influential publication that looked at the relationship between physical activity and sedentary behavior mm -hmm. and showed that if you got four times the amount that I just mentioned to you, mm -hmm. so basically 600 minutes a week of moderate intensity physical activity, mm -hmm. it didn't matter how long you sat. Mm. You could overcome the mortality mm. risk associated with sedentary behavior. Okay. Is there any data to support um, trying to uh, get up every hour when you're sedentary at work or those types of things? Was there any? Well, you know, the two go together. If you, the only way to accumulate 600 minutes a week is to get up regularly, right? right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if you target that, mm -hmm. you're gonna get up regularly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so thank you so much for letting us know about the new guidelines, and it's great to uh, chat with you. I'm so excited about this. Okay. It should be um, a real boon to help us in the clinic right. to help our patients do better. Sounds great. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome.